Dear colleagues, this patient has come with an acute attack of angle closure glaucoma. I have taken up this case for surgery. This is a small paracentesis and to reduce the pressure gradually, just depress the posterior leaf very gently. And now, I inject an air bubble. And now, I enlarge the small incision to 2.8 millimeter. Now, I inject viscoelastic substance. The antechamber is very shallow. The pupil has not dilated well. Now, I am making two paracentesis about two and a half clock hours away from the main incision. In this case I have planned to use B hex. The air bubble in the anterior chamber is replaced with SPMC. The intraocular pressure was 54 millimeter of mercury. After anti glaucoma medications, in that pressure, I had to take up the case for surgery. There are a lot of apprehensions that if we take cases with high pressure, there can be expulsive choroidal hemorrhage. Many speculations are there, but it is not so. I have done many cases with high intraocular pressure. First, I do a small paracentesis, decrease the intraocular pressure gradually, and then take up the case. So far, Nothing has happened. And now I'm tucking the flanges. I was going to tuck this flange, then I found that this is not the alternate flange. <coughs> so I go to the right flange and tuck it underneath the iris. Now I take this flange and tuck it. And this is being done with the left hand. We, the surgeons, must develop skill in our left hands. Many, lot of maneuvers are to be done by the left hand. So, please use your left hand many many times be a very competent surgeon now this is capsulorexis since the entry chamber is very shallow in this case I didn't want to use the uterita I was using this at some point of time, I made a scratch on the corneal endothelium in this case. The endothelial flap was created, we'll see that later. But that flap didn't come off. I could tamponate that flap with a small air bubble and ask the patient to lie down for about six hours straight in supine position. So, Rexis is in progress with the 26 case band needle and it is completed. Now, hydro dissection. The cornea has become clear now. Initially, it was steamy. So, after reduction of intraocular pressure, the cornea has become clear. 
And now I introduce the tip of the FECO handpiece bevel down. You can see that one flange has not been tucked properly. The flange which is at 2 o'clock has not been tucked properly. But still we have sufficient dilatation of bevel. And now the lens is being taken out. This is a very early cataract. You can see it is grade 1 nuclear sclerosis, very soft. So you just support the nucleus making a pit and slice it with the chopper. So this should not be called chopping, this should be called slicing. Just to make a distinction from chopping. Make a small pit, just support the nucleus keeping the tip of the phaco handpiece in that pit and bring the chopper from periphery to the tip. Thus you can do slicing or mechanical chop. So the nucleus is almost managed. This is the last portion of the nucleus and we can see very good red glow at this moment. And you can see a flap inferiorly, just inferior to the center. Cortex is being cleaned at this moment. This is a 23G Simco. Cortex is removed. Posterior capsule is very clear in this case. Now I inject viscoelastic substance and implant a hydrophilic acrylic foldable intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Here it is. The lens goes into the capsular bag. Now I dial the lens, place the haptics at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock position. Now I am untucking the flanges just by the Sinsky hook and all the flanges have come out and it is in front of the iris now. Now I hold this B hex hexagonal device with the 23G crocodile forceps and gently pull it out. See how easy the BHEX device is to implant and explant, to put and to remove. And now the viscoelastic substance is being flashed out.
At this moment, I noted endothelial flap or not yet. Yes, it is there just underneath that light reflex at around 5 o'clock, just near the 5 o'clock iris margin. Yes. Now I am going behind the intraocular lens, flashing it for some time to remove the viscoelastic substance. The intraocular pressure was very high. I do not want to raise the intraocular pressure atrogenically. I mean by not removing the viscoelastic substance thoroughly, I do not want to raise the intraocular pressure. So, the visco was removed thoroughly taking care not to cause that endothelial flap further injured. Side ports are hydrated and a gentle final lavage of the anterior chamber is done with the 23G Simco cannula. The antechamber is formed and the case is concluded after checking that the wounds are not leaking. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Please be a great surgeon. Do very good service to the mankind.